Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you're a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10-day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Michael Trabens RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Forest River Ultra V 261.8 VS travel trailer. I'm here to show you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you can have this big awning you're going to need to leave room for. And then on your off campsite, Besides your slides, which you obviously gonna have to leave room for them to come in and out unimpeded. Pretty deep slides too. So leave lots of room. I also want you to think about where your power and water is at. And they are both on the rear of the unit. Power connection there, water connection here. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing we're gonna do is level your unit. And it does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light, should you arrive at night, raise or lower the unit until you're level. Once you have your unit level, we're going to stabilize it. Just note, a little override right here for a hand crank. Should uh, you lose power, you can get this up and down still. Speaking of power, check your battery post now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. All right, we got our unit level. Let's go ahead and stabilize it. Your unit equipped with power stabilizing jacks. Before I run them down, I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris. Hot black top in the summer, get a four pack of those, set them down, and run these down on top of them. Just until they're taunt. Remember, our unit's already level. We only wanna bring these down just until it starts to feel like it's gonna lift the unit. Sometimes one leg will run down before the other. Give a second, they'll catch up to each other. So that's it. That's as far as you want to run them down. Same thing in the rear. See those working real quick. Do the same thing back here. Run them down just until they're taunt. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Got a big long Furion 30 amp cord on this. The way these go on now, we come into the left, twist to the right, and then put your gray washer on. End of that 30 amp, need to plug into a 110. There's a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Comes to your convenience pack. Got your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. At campsites, we are going to hook up to city water connection. Just around the corner of your campsite. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid in here because you don't know what the water pressure is in different campsites. Hook that up. Hook your hose up, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. So over here on your campsite, toward your entry doorway. You know what we're doing at this point, folks? Make sure our drain plug's back in. May have left it out last time you were camping. Get that in there nice and snug. Uh, plumber's tape, preferably. Putty will gum up on you. Get that in there nice and tight. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After the hose has been on for a little while, you know, go inside and open up your slides. What I need you to do is open up all of your water taps. Any water taps you can get to, open them up until you got a nice steady flow of water going through them. Once you got a nice steady flow of water going through them, go ahead and shut them off. 
then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to go uh to a campsite we're going to go dry camping or boondocking in that case just around the corner from a city water connection is our potable water tank or fresh water tank no need for a water pressure regulator here just gravity fill this with a hose two ways to tell when it's full one is an overflow valve right here or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tank there's also a fresh water button once that shows full put that cap back on there and then whenever you want to utilize that water you'll go ahead and turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump and hook the city water that's already pressurized all right that about covers everything to get you camp with power and water let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit got a hot and cold shower out here your potable water tank again your power stabilizing jacks in this back corner where this low point drain is right up underneath there is where your low point drain is at up underneath the metal here back of the unit here you get your city water connection your antifreeze inlet cable and satellite connection you got a ladder utilize it go up there and check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended rv roofing caulk you also prep for a furion backup camera spare tire with a cover again your power here with this slide closed you'll be able to better see this fresh water drain which is that gray one there that's fresh water tank those storage out here in this storage is a stand a griddle and a table i'll show you how to set them up here shortly wastewater and sewage outlet that's where we dump our tanks at again another storage area this is access to the back of your fridge a scare light up there two access panels up here one on each side to your propane you do set up on a magnet as well inside here is your battery disconnect that'll come important later when i talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector this will disconnect all the battery power to the unit again check your batteries uh docking light up front the other side of your propane your big awning led light a little porch light here you also prep for solar you can plug in a solar panel right here and that will trickle charge your batteries it says to only use zamp solar panels on this one it was designed just for zamp up top here you got a couple outdoor speakers scare and porch lights again your hot water heater a couple things on that if the hot water heater doesn't seem to be working come out here and see if these are bubbled up if they are simple press them back in or reset manual override for your slide sick blue for your furnace two things on that one uh don't ever have anything blocking it and two if you're running it steer clear of it it does get hot this is your lp quick connect for all the griddle area here I'll show you real quickly how your table sits on there griddle stand make sure your arms are out that'll clip on this side and all these little holes right here we'll slide right on that right above your handle and just that quickly you've got your griddle set up prep for tv out here you can snap one in here you got a cable of 110 right here also have your black tank flush on this side we'll discuss that when dumping our black and gray tanks and lastly another manual override over here about covers everything on the outside let's go take a look on the inside first thing i like to point out in every trailer coming inside is your fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency all the way to my left as soon as we come in the doorway so here's where we see our brand new battery black gray tanks uh excuse me battery next one's your fresh water that's why i said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full 
then your black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using that fresh water tank. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked to electric, excuse me, to gas, and over here to electric, and it does make a difference. This is a tank heater. That's where you can just turn on a little 12-volt tank uh, pad that's on your tanks to keep them from freezing in inclement weather. Down below that, your awning. I'm going to mention on your awning. It's still a little wet right now, so it might not fall, but you only want to run this awning out. There you go. Until that flap falls down and you can see that silver bar. Your awning runs out really fast, so keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to, or they will start running themselves out backwards. Same way on even the newer ones. Another thing is make sure that your door is not all the way open. Otherwise, as you see how close it comes here, your awning will catch it. Awning in, shut off our awning lights, porch light. I think I got a scare light out there. As you see, that whole bottom row is all lighting. Right up here is your antenna. Crank that to the right when you get to the campsite, to the left when you are leaving. RV technology sound system. So three zones of speakers. I'm not sure if we're going to pick up much inside this metal building here, but I'll run a quick scan. Three zones. One, two, and three. There's our modes. You got a Bluetooth. Auxiliary in, dot and TC, HDMI's, HDMI arc, and back to FM. I'll find your remote for your TV here shortly. One touch lighting. Your table will fold down. Set on these rubber pieces here. Put your back cushions on top for another uh, sleeping quarters. Over here is our thermostat. Crank your AC up. There that goes. These have a quick dump too. Shut your AC off. Shuts off quickly. Turn your heat on. Now when I shut your heat off, you'll notice it takes a few minutes for your heat fan to cycle through before it shuts off. And it does on all units. Continuing here in the living room. Looks like we might have sleeper sofa here for sure real quick how to set this up just remove your velcro cushions stand in the middle gives you good leverage lift up hold your legs out pull it towards you pull the back down and just say quickly you've got another sleeping quarters most important when you're putting it away, lift your back up first, otherwise you could damage this. Hold your legs in. Just jackknife it back down. Turn your cushions and just that quickly, you are back to the sofa. Heading off into the kitchen here, got a 110 down here. Let's open up your fridge, looks dramatic. Yeah, here's our controls. So we'll turn it on here. Now our mode, we're gonna go through our modes here. Gas, auto, auto means when you're plugged in, you run off electricity, as soon as you unplug, you go to gas, or simply go to gas. Temperature, looks like three settings, three being the coldest. Below your fridge, be your access panel to your breaker box and fuses got a ton of 15s in there a couple 30s and a 40 highly recommend having some of those with you to the right of that is going to be your safety alert propane carbon monoxide detector which is 12 volt which means it's always running off your battery so if you are out boondocking dry camping and you're going to be gone for the day use your battery disconnect up there to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone under our sink the access panel up to our propane. Here's your keys. Dual sink with a cover. Self-explanatory microwave. You have a light and a fan. Probably cooktop here. Not sure if your gas is on. 
put out a turn it. Find out right now. No, the gas is shut off. But just turn these to light and spark it here. And you do have a pilot for the oven light. All right, let's head on back. Check out our bathroom. You have 110 under here. More plumbing to maintain. Just keep an eye on it. No more, than, a little more than you would to, at home. Cause you're bouncing a house down the road again. In your ceiling, you have a hand crank open power exhaust vent. Shut that back off. Sliding in here. A couple doors to think about when traveling. Make sure your shower door is snapped open. Excuse me, on this one, closed. And bedroom doors are snapped open. Come back into your bedroom. Do you have a TV mount here? 110 cable up here. Some storage under your bed. Get hold of this handle here. Storage under the bed. And that about covers everything. You do have a hand crank open vent here. No exhaust to it. So let's act like we're leaving the campsite and get ready to close the unit up. So going back back the back two rooms, bedroom and bathroom. Shut them lights off. Come to your control panel. Shut off all the lights you can from here. Because then you can see any individual lighting. Have to walk through. These all just have a button right in the middle of them. As you see here. So we get all of our lighting off. Including our stereo. I had to mute. Hold it longer for it to shut off now all of our lights off except for the one all the way to the left that you can control from here and i'm gonna say doors and drawers you got two slides your living room one and your bedroom one come back in your bedroom make sure nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in nothing is in the way between your dresser and your bed we can start with that door open and go ahead and bring in that bed I'm going to just press in. The slide comes in. The bottoms always come in first because that's where the slide mechanism is. Then they straighten themselves out. And before I bring this other slide in, let's find your remote. Now so I found them, they're up in the cupboard to the left of your TV there. Turn your TV on here. Probably have to run a digital channel scan when you get to where you're going. Pick up channels. There you go. Shut that off and put those remotes right back up where they were. This is on a swivel. Make sure you have it tucked back when you travel. Second slide. Actually, let's go back here and close these doors again before bringing in our second slide. That one's secure, that one's secure. Come up here and hit slide in on number one. Again, we've secured all doors and drawers. I do want you to hear that noise because it's okay to hear for just a second. It's just a slide mechanism saying I'm all the way in. It's nothing grinding. Don't panic when you hear it. Shut your interior lights off and exit the unit. All right, these steps start on the bottom. Fold in, fold in, lift and tuck. Make sure before you leave the dump station to lock and deadbolt your door, lift and turn this handle. And I say before you leave the dump station in case you want to look at your panel while you're dumping your tanks. Alright, if we are all boondocking and we're heading home, we're going to go ahead and dump this freshwater tank right underneath there. Open that up, dump that. 
Otherwise, bring up your stabilizing jacks, unhook your power, your water, and your cable, and head on up to the dump station. And at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's going to be right behind your tires. You're also going to have an extra gray one up there, but behind your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. You're going to hook that up and you're going to pull that black handle over there. And once that sounds like it's no longer draining, you head inside, you check your panel. It shows that it's empty. Go ahead, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and come on over here to your tank flush. Hook that up, hook the hose up, and let that hose run for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all that nastiness out of there, and that's done. Remove your hose, check your tank, and make sure that all of that washout that you just sprayed in there has washed, has drained. Once that's drained, close your black handle, pull your gray handle. Now, while your gray handle is dumping, come back on over again, get up underneath here, and open up those low point drains, drain all that water out. When that's done, if you're done for the season, Heading home, Un go to your hot water heater, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump the remainder of your hot water out of your lines. Push that back down, otherwise your door won't open or close. And then pull that drain plug. Be careful, that will be hot water coming out of there. All right, our gray tanks are dumped. Go ahead and unhook that hose. You have your hose, come on up here, and dump this extra galley tank. This will be for your front sinks up there. Again, that'll be cleaner water, six of your showers. Just clean your sewage hose out for you. Take that sewage hose and store it in a nice, sanitary, convenient place, and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this rockwood for many years to come. Happy camping.